My name is Vedan Naidu. I am a grade six student in NPS International School in Singapore, and I am going to interview Dr. Kevin Lim today. Let me share a short profile of Dr. Kevin first. Following his clinical fellowship in pediatric orthopedics at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, Canada, Dr. Kevin Lim trained in top centers in Japan and New Zealand to hone his skills in pediatric spine and scoliosis surgery. His interests within pediatric orthopedics include cerebral palsy, clubfoot, and fractures in children. At the KK's Women and Children Hospital in Singapore, Dr. Kevin is chairman of the Division of Surgery, where he oversees the running of the surgical departments and operating theatres. Dr. Kevin is active in the social service vector sector, has won many pub public service medals and awards for both service and teaching excellence. Okay. Hello, Dr. Kevin. My name is Vidar Naidu. I was a little boy, barely two months old when I first met you. I was born in Jakarta, Indonesia, and my parents tell me that I'm able to take part in various sports such as cricket, football, and tennis thanks to the treatment you gave me. I would like to have an interview with you today because I want more people to know about Clubfoot so they can help those who require treatment and financial help. I would like to ask a few questions on Clubfoot if that's fine with you. Sure, be done. So the first question is, can you please tell us what exactly is Clubfoot and how common is it? Okay, so so hi again and um, hello to everyone who's tuning in for this. So, Viren, it doesn't seem that long ago since I was treating you for your Clubfoot and I'm uh, glad to know that you're doing well. So, so what is Clubfoot? Well, Clubfoot is a deformity of the foot where the foot is turned in. Uh, and it's turned in in such a way that the sole or the bottom of the foot is facing sideways or even upwards. Okay, so that's what it is essentially. And how common is it? It affects about one in a thousand live births. Um, and we know that it is a lot more common in boys than it is in girls. And another question that parents always ask us is, um, is it more common to have a club foot on just one side or is it uh, more common to have it on, on both feet? And the answer to that is it's about half and half. So about 50% will have what we call unilateral or one-sided club foot and the other 50% will have both feet affected. Okay. So the second question is, what is the reason some children are born with club foot? So many children who are born with club foot are otherwise healthy, normal children, right? So they're completely otherwise normal. And the only thing that is not quite right is the fact that one or both feet are turned inwards and they have club foot. So for these cases, which make up the majority of our patients with club foot, um, all around the world, we still haven't found one particular cause, right? So we know genetics has something to do with it. And we put it down to environmental factors, genetic factors, and the like. And then there is a minority group, and these are children with some other medical conditions. For example, spinal bifida, for example, arthrogryposis, uh, constriction band syndrome, neuromuscular disorders. So they have a lot more issues um, uh, in terms of uh, you know, what, what they were born with. And uh, for these children, the reasons are because of these other medical problems where they have club foot as an association. Okay. So what got you interested in club foot? So, so as you shared earlier, you know, after I've completed my orthopedic training, I decided that I enjoyed looking after young children uh, with bone problems and joint problems. So I went on to Canada to spend a year at the hospital for sick children. Some people call it Sick Kids Hospital. And that was in 2005, right? And when we do children's orthopedics, pediatric orthopedics, club food is one of the things that becomes like our bread and butter, right? We, we do see it, you know, not on maybe not a daily basis, but every few weeks, um, certainly in my practice, maybe every few weeks, maybe once every month or one case every two months, uh, they will come along. Right, so we will have to be able to treat these uh, young babies well, and to make sure we're able to correct the deformity in the foot. So, when I was in sick kids, I had a good amount of exposure 
And I think that kind of fueled my interest in club food. Okay. So how many years have you been treating club food and what has changed over the time? So since 2005, right? That's when I, I really uh, started seeing a, a lot of young babies with club food. I started uh, treating these babies with club food in Toronto when I was in Canada. And that was in 2005. Um, so 17 years almost. Right, and what has changed? I think what has changed is, uh, and later we're going to talk about it. I believe we're going to talk a bit about the the brace, right? So what has changed is that the design of the brace um, has evolved over the years. So it used to be a fairly simple, rigid brace, um, and over the years, people have developed um, braces that are a little bit lighter, braces that have got little swivels to allow a little bit of movement uh, in the ankles and the feet. So that has changed. And, and, and I think very recently also, they've developed braces that are, they look like little shoes that are with the feet turned out a little bit. So instead of having two shoes and a bar as a single unit, they have individual shoes. So, and this would be particularly useful uh, for patients with a one-sided club foot. So they don't have to use a full uh, boots and bar setup as we know it, but it's just a single, it's just like a boot on one leg. Okay, so so that has changed. But in terms of the principles of treating club foot, that hasn't really changed. Okay. So I have seen pictures of me with a cast on my leg up to my knee when I was small. So my parents tell me that the cast was put to correct my club foot and the method which you used is called Ponsetti method. Could you please tell us more about the Ponsetti method? Yes, so this is a technique that the, the late Dr. Ponsetti uh, you know, has taught the world. He used to practice in Iowa in the United States. And the history of it is he, he, he really studied club food in uh, specimens in the lab. And he you know, applied cars to see whether he could correct the deformities or not. And essentially what the Ponsetti treatment involves is it involves slow correction just by sort of stretching the muscles of the foot. So when I see a young baby with club foot, what I do is I will, I will stretch the foot and try to correct uh, the turn in foot a little bit. And then I will hold it with a plaster cast. Oh. And then we'll get these babies to come back one week later. We will remove the, the cast that we put on the previous week. And then we'll push it and stretch it a little bit more. Okay, and then we'll repeat the procedure. So we stretch it, we hold it in a cast, we stretch it some more, we hold it in a second cast, and a third cast, and a fourth cast, and a fifth cast sometimes. So on average, it takes about three to five casts to get the foot pretty straight. Wow. Okay, so we manipulate it, we stretch it, and we hold it in a cast, and we repeat this procedure. Now, for the majority of babies, some people say 90%, in my experience is you know, 90, 95%, they require a very small procedure, a very small surgical procedure. And that involves um, the lengthening or really the, what we call a heel cord tenotomy. So the Achilles tendon that we all have, that's also known as the heel cord, right? And what we need to do is we need to uh, divide that heel cord in order to, to kind of get to the finish line in terms of correcting that club foot deformity. Yeah. Okay, so... Whatever I have just described, I think of it as the first phase of treatment. So I tell the parents, I tell uh, families that the treatment really has two phases. The first phase will be largely done by me or whoever is looking after the child, right? And, and uh, providing the treatment. <clears throat> so the first phase involves the plaster cast. So we need to bring the baby back every week. We need to remove the cast from the previous week. We need to have a look at the foot. We push it a little bit more we are reapply another cast, okay? And in the vast majority of these babies, they require a heel cord tenotomy, a minor surgical procedure. And this can be done as a day case. It can be done under local anesthetic. Um, so it's a fairly straightforward procedure. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes. Okay. okay? And then we put on one final cast for about three weeks, and that brings us to the end of the first phase. And when we get to that stage, the foot is pretty much corrected and it looks pretty much like a normal foot. Okay, the second part of the treatment 
involves wearing a brace. I think you probably remember that you had yeah. a brace. Okay, so that brace has to be worn until the child is about four years old, right? Four years old or four years old and a few months, that is what we normally recommend. And why is the brace important? The brace is important because we need to maintain the correction that we have achieved with the cast. Right? Because in a very young baby who is two months old, three months old, and we've completed the first phase of the treatment, now that baby is still a very, very young uh, person. And, and, and this young baby is not going to the playground and running and jumping and stretching all those muscles in the legs. So, so it's important that we prescribe a brace to keep the muscles on stretch in yeah. the hope that we will not have a relapse situation. Okay, So to recap, Phase one is uh, castings. So we stretch, uh, we call it manipulation and casting. Um, on average, three to five casts. In the majority of babies, a tenotomy. And then phase two of treatment will be treatment in a brace. Okay? And that will yeah. take us to the end of the treatment. Yeah. So is Ponsetti treatment the only way to correct club foot? So the Ponsetti treatment is one method of treating clubfoot. So there is another method which is practiced in France, which is called you know, the, the, the French method or the functional method. And that involves uh, a lot more physiotherapy, a lot more taping. So families in France, if they live far away from the tertiary hospital, they actually have to travel and stay close to the center because the parents need to bring the babies in quite often. Right, a few times a week. So, whereas in Ponsetti, it's just once a week to have the cast change. If you live in France, maybe you'll be treated with the French method and you will need to be visiting the hospital a lot more often. And, and the treatment is largely institute, instituted by physiotherapists. Okay, so um, I know they have very good results as well. So, in France, I think the French method is a bit more common, but Certainly, the United States, North America, and most parts of the world, I think the Ponsetti method has been accepted to be very successful, and a lot of doctors are doing it now. So that's another method, um, which I guess you can compare with the Ponsetti method. And then, of course, um, surgery is another way of treating club foot, right? But why would we want to operate on a, on a very young baby's foot? Yeah. Um, we can get very good results. The foot can be quite turned in, quite deformed. And if we do an operation, we can probably straighten the foot well. The problem is, if we do an operation on a very young child's foot, as the child grows older, what happens? That foot will become a bit stiff. And when somebody has a foot with a lot of scar tissue and a foot that's very stiff, then what happens when he or she wants to go to the basketball court and have a game? right? Maybe that child will not be able to play a full game. Maybe after half an hour, he or she may, might say, well, my foot is starting to ache a little bit. It starts to hurt a little bit and I need, I need to rest. So the advantage of the Ponsetti and the French methods, of course, how do we treat it? Again, we treat it by stretching, right? We stretch, we hold, we stretch, we hold, and we and, and essentially we're not sort of cutting any tissue, we're not operating on any tissue, and that will result in a foot that's a lot more supple, a lot more normal. Yeah. Okay. So what happens to children who do not get treatment early in their life? I think if you don't get treatment early in your life, then and your club foot is um, moderate or severe, then you might end up not walking normally. right? So instead of walking with your foot in like a neutral position, your foot might be turned in and you might be walking on the outer border of your foot. And clearly that's not normal. Right? So you won't be able to wear shoes normally. Um, when you walk, you will be walking with a limp. And when a young child goes to school, you know, his or her friends might be saying, you know, why is this boy walking funny or why is this girl walking funny? And sometimes that might affect them emotionally as well. Right? So um, it's best if it can be identified early. It's best if it can be treated early and we can correct the foot and get it to uh, neutral and normal. Right. So how did you get trained in the Ponsetti method? So, so as I mentioned earlier, so I, I really had a good exposure when I was the year I was in Canada. So, so lots of babies there with, with club foot because it was a tertiary referral center. 
And so I had the opportunity to treat them, you know, to, to put on cars, to do the tenotomies, uh, and, and also to see them in follow-up. So there were patients who had their treatment. They're now two years old, three years old. They came back and I could actually see the, the, the good results that we were getting uh, using the Ponsetti technique. So in your view, how many doctors in Asia would be trained to provide treatment for clubfoot? I think that's a really difficult question to answer because uh, as we mentioned, clubfoot is not all that common. So if you think about our situation in Singapore, we have a population of about 5.5, 5.6 million, something like that. And there are probably between you know, five to 10 of us who are familiar with the Ponsetti technique and so that if you, if you you know do a simple calculation that's maybe one person who is able to treat using the ponsetti technique per million population wow. right so if, if for 1 million people in the in, in the country or in an area if you have one one doctor who knows how to treat it based on our experience that is probably sufficient because we are not overwhelmed with the number of of clubfoot babies that we need to treat um, you know, when a baby is born with club food and mummies and daddies bring them to us, we can almost apply the first cast immediately. Yeah. Right? So, so there's not much of a wait. So can this uh, ratio be applied to elsewhere in the world? Um, I don't think I can confidently say, say so. But uh, I think what is important is that wherever we are, it's important to have people who are trained in the technique, right? So, and we know, for example, neighboring countries like Indonesia, these countries are really large countries. Yeah. And you might have a, you know, quite a few doctors in the capital city. But what happens if you have a, a few babies in the countryside and it's a really long distance to the hospital? So I think in situations like these, it's important to have perhaps uh, volunteer groups um, and, and to train people within the local communities who are able to treat club food. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have to be an orthopedic doctor to be able to provide the Ponsetti treatment? So the short answer is no. All right. So I think, I think anybody um, can learn the Ponsetti technique. The technique itself is not that all that difficult to learn, but as with any technique, you get better at it the more you, the more you do. Right. So in, in, North America, I think in the UK, a lot of clubfoot babies are treated by physiotherapists who are extremely well trained, and you know who can, who can get very very good results treating clubfoot themselves. So I think they work together with the medical teams. So they will apply the cars, um, and from what I understand, when it the babies when it comes to the tenotomy, when it comes to that minor surgical procedure then they'll get their surgical colleagues, the doctors to do the procedure. But by and large, they take care of the patients, they apply the cast, they look after the patients when they are in that second phase and wearing the brace. All right. So can you share two experiences of treating club for children? One is the most challenging and the most rewarding experience. Okay. So the most challenging first. I think, I think the most challenging would be a baby who is probably around four months old um, and this was some years back. This, this was a young girl who was brought by parents uh, from a neighboring country and who had some treatment in the neighboring country first. Uh, but when I first saw this girl, the foot was still, the club foot was still quite severe. So it was maybe partially corrected, but it wasn't fully corrected. And it was really difficult because I think, um, you know, from the initial cars and the, the baby already had one tenotomy and, you know, I was presented with this baby with a, a quite a severe club foot. So I had to cast it. And because uh, of the previous treatment, the foot was really stiff, you know. And even with the first two, three casts, we found that we weren't getting a lot of correction as we would normally. So I had to modify my technique a little bit. I had to redo the tenotomy for the baby uh, and then continue with a few casts. So I had to modify the technique a little bit. Uh, but thankfully... You know, after one month or six weeks of treating the baby, the foot was pretty normal and we could get the, the, the neutral feet into a brace. So that was probably uh, one of my most challenging cases. And then you asked about uh, the most rewarding case. The most rewarding case, again, 
uh, is, is a fairly uh, older boy. I think he was seven when he was uh, brought to me and he had basically a club foot that was not treated. So he was walking, his left foot was normal, uh, but his right foot was clearly a club foot, a pretty severe club foot, and, and he was walking on the outer border of his foot. So instead of walking with the feet flat, he was walking sideways, right? Um, so the big toe was like facing the ceiling, facing the sky, and he was walking on the, all his pressure was on the fifth toe side of the foot. Okay, so he was walking like that. And so I told his guardian and I said, we will probably do this. Why don't we try some of these cars that we do with the Ponsetti technique, just like we do for the newborn babies, right? So let's put on a few cars. Let's see how much we can correct the club foot. Mind you, this is a neglected club foot. It's never been treated. And the boy is now six years old, right? Um, so I said, let's try this first. I suspect we will be able to correct it to a certain point, but not fully. So if we can correct to a certain point and we find that things are not moving, things are not changing anymore, then we will, then we will take him to the operating theater and we'll do the rest of the correction surgically. So we put on the first cast, we put on the second cast, and I think it was two or three cars max, you know, not more than three cars. And we were pleasantly surprised that his foot was pretty much back to neutral, right? And I found that, you know, his, his tendon was just a little bit tight at the back. And I told his guardian. So he was, um, he was a boy, again, from a neighboring country. One of these, um, I think, expatriate families saw him and, you know, was kind enough to say, we'll buy him an air ticket and bring him to to Singapore for some treatment, right? So that's what they did. And I told the guardian, I said, well, if we were to do any extensive surgery at this stage, you know, just to get that, that uh, correct, that slightly tight tendon, that might not be in his best interest because what happens if he ends up with a wound infection or things like that and when, he, when he's back in his country? So we decided just to um, get the physiotherapist to teach him some stretching exercises, you know, and we gave him a small plastic splint to hold his ankle in neutral. Mm -hmm. So that worked very well for him. And in fact, before he went back to his home country, um, the host, right, the expat family who brought him in, actually uh, did organize a little party for him. And, and he was yeah. wearing his plastic splint and wearing his new track shoes and he was kicking a football around, right? So, so it was rewarding because this was a case of neglected club foot for six years, he'd been walking with a limb. His foot was turned in. And, you know, just with a few casts, we managed to straighten his foot. We gave him a plastic splint and we didn't have to do anything uh, major. We didn't have to bring him to theatre. And, of course, uh, that delighted the, 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 all of us in our team, right? That, that just with a few casts, we managed to get him pretty much back to normal. And fast forward a few years, this lady emailed me and she said, guess what? He's doing very well. His, his foot is still nice and straight and he's working as a, not really a taxi driver, but he, 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 he on his bicycle or his motorbike, he actually um, rides this bike or, or rides his cycle and he brings people around. So it's like a taxi driver, but he doesn't drive a car, but he rides a bike and that's what he's doing. So, so uh, he's doing well. He's, he's a teenager now and he's doing well. And of course, I was very happy to hear that. Well, so what advice can you give to parents of clubfoot children? I think the advice I would give is clubfoot is a very treatable condition. Um, and of course, when, when mummies and daddies learn that the, the baby, you know, in mummy's tummy, the unborn baby has, may have clubfoot one or both sides, they get very worried. And certainly in my clinic, I have seen parents, you know, Daddies accompanying mummies to my clinic and saying, um, how serious is this? Um, how are you going to treat it? You know, and, and is there a chance that we may need to, you know, not carry on with the pregnancy? And I say, absolutely not, because this is a very, very treatable condition, right? And uh, the treatment will be completed in what, six weeks or so. And then after that, the child wears a brace and basically practically all the kids with an isolated club foot lead a pretty normal life. And it doesn't really handicap them in any way. That's what I'll tell them. So I'll tell them not to worry. It's really treatable. And, 
you know, most people who are trained in the technique will be able to get a very good result. All right. So what can be done to build awareness amongst the general population about club food? I think people who are club food providers, you know, if they work in an institution, they can have a little bit of information on their website because everybody goes to websites now, right? You Google whatever you want to learn about. Yeah. And then other volunteer groups, um, support groups, like what you're doing now, you know, if you, if you put out some information, if you put out a podcast or something like that for people to tune into and to listen, I think that would be very helpful. So I think social media is, is the short answer. Use social media effectively, give information. And also, if we have um, patient stories, I think those are really powerful as well. All right. So the last question. Is there anything being done by the governments in Asia to include club foot treatment in the public in the public healthcare policy similar to vaccines for polio? Um, maybe not to that extent, right? So, but but I think uh, most countries, certainly in Singapore, where we practice, um, if you are a citizen of the country and you have this problem, uh, you can get you can get um, subsidy uh, accorded to you uh, based on your nationality. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Kevin, for this interview. Thank you, Vidan. So nice to see you again. Please give my regards to your parents, okay? Yeah. Thank you.